right, welcome. So I'm Mr. Bell. I'm going to be walking through the exercise assignment for chapter two. I'm not going to give you necessarily all the answers, but I'm going to give you some tips to hopefully make it easier for you and help you finish out the exercise assignment that you're uh, given for chapter two. So here we are. We're on um, exercise assignment. The, the the first problem in the exercise assignment for chapter two. And really what this is, is you've got all of these vocab words, right? Basically you're just matching up the definitions. So that one's pretty easy. You've got your ebook over here you can use, of course. Um, in the uh, exams, when we do the exams, you're able to also use your book and your notes. Um, I uh, would ask you not to use people Right? No people, just you, your book and your notes. And um, the trick about the exercise assignment, of course, is it doesn't have the check my work button up here. Right. So as you're doing these, or that's it for the exams. The exercise assignments have them. So as you do them, it's good to um, figure out how to finish these problems, what kind of things you might miss. So when you get to the exams, you can be more thorough and complete as you do those problems. Okay, so the second one here, again, this is this is, as well as another vocab, you're going to be selecting from these. So these are pretty easy, right? Just make sure you use your your ebook and and review those um, definitions. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be um, a definition. So to help kind of walk you into the debits and credits a little bit on these exercises, right? So. Uh, I'm going to do the f uh, a couple of them here just to kind of give you an idea of how this works. So our service revenue, of course, this is a revenue account. This is in equity, okay? Revenues increase equity, so it's going to go the same direction as equity, right? Which it, for equity in general, the normal balance is going to be on the credit side. And so revenues are also credit normal balances. The type of account down here, we're going to go ahead and pick revenue. It's in equity, but it's uh, revenue specific, right? Uh, so on that one. So um, the increase will always be to the normal balance side. So really these last two columns are going to be identical. Okay, so as you go down through here, let's pick another one here. Let's do an expense, right? So we're going to do salaries expense. So this one is opposite of revenues, right? Revenues and expenses are both in equity, but they do the opposite things, right? Revenue increases your equity, expenses decrease equity. Put together on the income statement, revenues minus expenses, they give you net income. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick this out. This is an expense account. And because it's gonna be opposite, right? Instead of credits here, we're gonna have debits. So something that I often say, um, in the in my live class is uh, expenses or debits, right? You just kind of go with that. Uh, you, when you expense things, you debit, right? You debit the expense, and so that's going to be something that you're going to do here as you record your um, original journal entries. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps you out. If you have any questions on these, again, use your ebook, find out what these accounts are, what type of account they are, and then. And then cross-reference over to those um, to the uh, debit and credit uh, diagram that shows uh, what the normal balances are for the types of accounts. This is something definitely uh, to commit to memory, right? This is going to help you a whole lot for the rest of the term, and it's going to help you also in uh, your next uh, accounting class if you do the managerial accounting. So for sure. Uh, Memorize that um, those debits and credits on uh, the types of accounts, right? So that'll help you out. Okay, so this one's lying out. This is our accounting equation again, right? So this is our accounting equation, and we're going to be given an opportunity to go from the accounting equation, right? We get, are given the numbers up top here, so your your numbers may be different than mine. These are algorithmic problems, so most likely your numbers are going to be different than mine. But really, um, what we're going to do is we need to put these numbers in the right uh, account in here. What, what accounts are affected by which numbers? So we start off here. We say, so 
Grovo um, company bills a client $54,000 for services. So this is right there, that is gonna be revenue, okay? So we're gonna put that on there. Provides the following, agrees to accept the following three items in full payment. So in payment, they're gonna receive $1,000 cash. So there's the $1,000 there in cash. Uh, $77,000 in equipment. And uh, as part of the equipment, right, maybe connected here, there is a note payable as well on the equipment. So they're gonna give us equipment, but the equipment's not all paid off. So they want us to assume the liability for the equipment. So that's kind of gonna kind of be the balance there, right? Hopefully that makes sense. You can also, of course, check your work and just make sure you've got the right numbers that are supposed to be in the right connected to the right accounts okay now the next part here is you're doing a journal entry record the provide uh, pro providing of services to the client okay so this is gonna be uh, debits and credits one thing to note on this is you are gonna have two debits and two credits okay all of these accounts are gonna be increasing so you got to look through them and say, okay, uh, what accounts are uh, increase or have a normal balance of debit and which ones have a normal balance of credit? So revenues right there, right? Revenues are normally credits. Okay, so something to note, right? $11,000 in cash. So cash is our number one asset. Assets are normally debit balances, right? Equipment right here. Again, another asset. Um, this one, assets or debits, right? Debit balances normally. So increasing, receiving that asset will give us a, a, a debit, debit in that equipment account. And then our notes payable, this is a liability. Okay, so liabilities are uh, normally credit, right? Balances, so credit, if we get more debt like we're getting here, we're gonna credit the liability, the note payable. And so you're gonna line those out. So you're gonna have um, four accounts here, two debits up top, right? The debits go first. That's just normal kind of format for accounting. Debits go first. So as you're doing these journal entries, make sure you put your debits first. So if you put them in there and you realize, ah, the debit is on the bottom, uh, move that debit up right it's got to be up up top so debits go first and then the credits the last two accounts will be credits and they will uh, equal each other out right so that's the journal entry format so we're putting debits first credits second right below it and our numbers need to balance out one of the other rules that I share and we'll cover this in the other ones you got to have at least one debit and at least one credit you may have more of both or you may have more debits than credits or more credits than debits it doesn't matter how many accounts are involved you need at least one of both right debit and credit and you, the numbers in total the debit column needs to balance with the credit column right they need to equal the same number okay so that's that's uh, requirement B there requirement C now the this is going on to our next step in the accounting cycle right so first we we analyzed our transactions, figured it out with the accounting equation. Then we moved and we actually did our journal entry. This is the journal entry, okay? Two debits, two credits, okay? And then, um, now we're actually moving this over to a ledger, or it's, a ledger is signified kind of by the T account, right? Debit side, credit side. Which one is impacted for each, right? Our cash, of course, gets a debit on this side. The credit will be blank for now. We don't have any credits on cash on this transaction, just a debit, right? Notes payable, liability, there is gonna be a credit there. Equipment, debit, revenue is gonna be a credit. So we got the debits over on this side, credits on that side. Really, that's what it represents, right? And so we're, we're moving moving what we did from requirement B, basically, the debits and credits, over to the ledgers that are impacted or the accounts ledgers that are impacted, which are gonna be these four, okay? 
So that's kind of how we do that one. Now we move on to number five. We got lots of lots of journal entries and ledgers going on here. Okay. So this represents when you see this in your in your homework. This represents a ledger as well. So we got the we got the debits over here. And typically, what happens here is the um, let's see here. So let's let's read this one and kind of do the first one here for you, so you can get an idea of what's going on. So um, so we got quarantine company had one hundred and sixty one thousand dollars of accounts payable on September thirty and one hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars on October thirty first. So so what happens here is we're we're get, we're given our balances. Right. So really, as we talk about the October um, transactions that go into the ledger here, we first start with the beginning balance. So the beginning balance for October 1st will be the ending balance that comes from September, which we see here. And that's our very first number. Right. So since we have an accounts payable, let me get rid of this here real quick. Our accounts payable is a liability. So we're going to have that balance on the credit side that's the normal balance for a liability so depending on what type of account here we're going to have our balances on one side or the other right so liabilities credit balance so we'll start off with that balance there right so that's our beginning balance and we see automatically we see that um, the balance the ending balance kind of update for us okay so our goal here, we see that our goal here is to end up with the ending balance of $137,000. That will be the ending balance for October. So total purchases on credit during October were $290,000. So we bought some things from vendors, didn't pay them. We said, we'll pay you later, right? That's a payable right there. So our purchases will increase our all uh, right, there we go. We'll increase our accounts payable. So by $290,000, okay? So we see now our ending balance is gonna be $451,000. That's not right, we wanted 137,000. So really what we're doing here is we're determining, we're trying to determine how much cash was paid on accounts payable. How much of it did we pay off? Well, we, total right now if we didn't pay any off we'd have 451,000 but we did pay some off we paid enough off to end us with a hundred and thirty seven thousand dollar balance so we know that the difference between these two numbers here really is what we paid right so if we didn't pay anything it'd be 451 we did pay whatever we paid right X the unknown right number here is what we're trying to solve for really and so we're gonna we're gonna do that equation real quick. Let's bring up our calculator. We have 451,000 if we didn't pay any off. We did pay some off, so now we have, we're gonna subtract out the ending balance of what we should have, and that'll tell us the difference, or what we paid, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and throw that over on this side. What was that, 314,000, I believe? And that will be the amount that we paid. So cash uh, payments on account. So payments on account. There we go. So we can double check that. Look, it looks like sure enough, there's our ending balance. Perfect. That's what we wanted it to be, right? And we can go ahead and check my work and, and everything looks, looks good. And we're going to continue as we go. We're going to continue with the different uh, tabs. So each of these tabs, so tab B, for example, here, is um, accounts receivable. So not a liability this time. This time it's a an asset. Same kind of idea, right? Because accounts payable and accounts receivable are really opposites, right? Payables are things where we we don't pay for things until later. Receivables are our um, our earnings that we don't get paid for until later, right? Somebody else is going to pay us later. So receivables are assets. Um, and so the beginning balance is going to be on this side. So just know that anything on this side is going to be an increase to receivables. So if we um, earn more revenue but don't get paid, right, that's going to be um, an increase on that side. A decrease on here is going to be cash that we received, right? Once we receive the cash, it's not a receivable anymore. 
So we see our beginning balance here of 107,000. Okay, we see the collections, uh, collections, and we also have the ending balance here of 98,000. So we know this is our goal. 98,000 is our goal for this ending balance down here. So we need to solve for it. Looks like how much we sold on credit. So that'll be that'll be one to solve for. Okay. So if we have if we have um, this, another way we can put this is we can put it in kind of a math formula, right? So uh, for example, uh, we could say on the very first one we could say uh, beginning balance plus purchases on account minus payments on account equals ending balance, right? So if we write that down, we see all the components in a math kind of formula. If you're missing one of the components, then that will be the one you have to solve for, right? So isolate that one out and then solve for it. So that's kind of something we, we can do as we're doing this um, these kind of accounts. So this one, I'll just tell you this one real quick and we'll move on. So this is cash. This is our number one asset, right? As assets go, this asset's at the top of the list, right? Of our chart of accounts. And so um, that will be definitely a beginning balance on the debit side. So we, uh, all the ins will be debits. All the outs or payout of cash will be credits. Then we gotta find that ending balance there that we need. Okay, all right, so that's that one. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any more questions on that one. Um, let's see, so we got this. The, the, these are a bunch of journal entries, right? So we're doing journal entries. We're looking at the transactions. Number one thing to key off of. Okay, there's a couple things, right? Um, you're gonna want to make sure that you have close to you uh, those rules of debits and credits, right? So there's a little graph uh, of rules, debits and credits. Make sure you have that. That's your cheat sheet, but that's okay to use on these right so if you um, if you see an asset you're gonna say okay what happens to the asset uh, is it increasing or decreasing the asset and therefore you know which side of the balance or you, you know if it's increasing the asset it's gonna be a debit to the asset decrease it's gonna be a, a credit same thing with liabilities flipped it around right so liabilities if we're increasing the liability more debt that's gonna be a credit decreasing the liability or paying it off, that'll be a debit, okay? Um, equity, that whole expanded equation, make sure you know, right, on the, the capital account, the withdrawals, the revenues, and the expenses, what those debits and credits are as well. And th this will really help you out. Okay, so have that in hand. For these as well, queue off of cash, right? So look for cash in uh, all of these things if the word cash is in there like this very first one you know cash is going to be one of your accounts you're going to put down here okay so in this case uh, the owner is investing cash in the company the, the company is receiving cash so we know cash is coming in cash it, in incoming cash is debit outgoing cash is a credit right it's an asset our number one asset so what is the credit on this? And we need we need two accounts at least. There could be some that where we have more than two accounts, but we need at least two because we need one debit and one credit at least, right? Could be more. Uh, so on this one, the credit in this case is when we uh, invest in the company, when an owner invests, they're increasing their capital account. In that case, that's gonna be our credit. So we've got 18,000 on the debit side, 18,000 on the credit side. There's examples of these in the book as well. So if you see, if you go to the book, you can look at examples that step through these type of um, problems. Find one similar and it'll give you the accounts. It may not give you the numbers exactly, but at least it'll kind of give you a pattern to follow. Okay, so let's keep going here. Um, so I'm, and I'm gonna kind of give you a few tips here as we go along. So again, uh, we're looking for at least two count, accounts, maybe more. Company purchased $11,000 of furniture made from reclaimed wood on credit. Did, does it have the word cash in here? No, it doesn't, right? Does not have the word cash. So in this case, cash isn't gonna be one of our uh, accounts, right? This And this side, we've got uh, furniture is coming in. That's gonna be our asset we're getting, right? We're buying furniture. So furniture is gonna be one of our accounts here. There it is right there. 
That'll be our debit. That's our asset that's increasing, debit. Um, so what are we paying? We're not paying cash. It says on credit. Well, credit's not an account necessarily for us, right? So, but to pay later, that means we're going to have some type of a payable. There we go. Okay, so debit and credit, right? Make debits go on top. Okay, number three here. Ah, there it is. We see it. There's the cash account. So we know cash is going to be one of our accounts. In this one, we are not receiving cash. We are paying it, right? The company paid cash. So we know that that cash is going to be uh, our credit. So, so what is the debit on this one, right? What are we paying for? Well, it looks like we're paying for insurance. We don't, we don't expense our insurance all up front on this one, right? This is the uh, matching principle for expenses, right? So we, we expense them as we use them. So with this, when we pay for insurance up front, we haven't used our insurance until the, that policy time passes, right? So instead of having insurance expense, we've got a prepaid insurance up there. So those are our accounts on that one. Uh, company build a customer, 10,000 for um, sustainability services provided. Okay, Did, is there cash? Nope, no cash on this one. So cash isn't gonna be it. We uh, build a customer, so right, we provided services. We earned revenue. So this is something as we think back towards chapter one with our revenue recognition principle. Uh, when do we get account revenue? When we earn it, right? Not when we receive cash. This is this is an accrual base. This is accrual basis accounting. So, um, if we were to be paid right off the bat when we did the services, we could record the cash. But this one, uh, we're not going to record cash on this. Instead, we're going to record a a receivable. Right? We're going to get paid later on that one because we build them. So they'll pay us later. Hopefully, that'll be the case. Uh, on this one, we can also record the revenue that we earned. So that's going to be our credit. So debit accounts receivable, credit revenue on that one. Okay. Um, company paid. There it is. We got cash there. So of course this is paying out. So we know which side it is, right? We're not getting it. We're paying it. And um, we're paying for that furniture purchase right back here, right? So we, we paid for some furniture. Here it is, right? So this payable right now, it was a credit we're paying that off okay so now uh, in this one our instead of having a credit to accounts payable we're paying off the payable so it's going to be our debit and then of course our cash is leaving us so that'll be the credit okay so some of these are going to be connected like that so keep in mind kind of what that looks like um, again if it has cash in here it's going to be one of your accounts if you're getting it or collecting it in this case it's, it'll be your debit right and just know this this could be connected right this is connected to services that we did before we're now collecting the cash so we're getting the cash this time and therefore let's look back at our our services here this one right here right we recorded instead of cash in lieu of cash it was a receivable so now the receivable is being paid off so on this one we're getting the cash I'll just I'll just show you how this one is set up here and as we pay off the receivable it goes from debit to credit right so this one's the credit to receivable we're paying it off all right here's some more investment into uh, the company just like the first one really right and then we have um, some cash this is um, this one's that this one's called an unearned revenue okay so that's a liability so we're getting the cash cash is going to be received of course uh, in this case we are haven't uh, actually recorded revenue yet right because we haven't earned it we haven't done the job yet so it'll be unearned revenue that's a liability because we got this cash we haven't actually earned it yet so we might need to give the cash back if we never do the job right we might need to give this cash back so it's a liability to us in the in the future so so anyways those are some things to hopefully help with that one uh, here's some other ones 
Okay, so we're gonna do these journal entries again, queuing off cash, right? Cash will help you get at least the debit or credit and then try to figure out what happens, what's happening on the other side. So that'll get you started on those, right? When we have cash going, all these it looks like have cash of some type coming in or out. And then, then we're gonna answer those. So you can answer those questions right there. Uh, as part of that so don't skip that one if it doesn't give you the green check at the top make sure you got do required to on there okay again with this one we're doing uh, we're doing these journal entries of course if cash is in there do that right make sure you're doing uh, got the cash going on right on all these okay and then on these have answered the questions at the end there so those two are going to be similar and then we've got this very last one. So, so this very last one here is going to be um, we're kind of we're kind of doing it backwards a little bit, but they're connected, right? These two, right? There's part one and part two. Nine and ten are are connected. And so as you do these, um, this is this is one uh, just to give you an example of where we have more than one possible debit or one possible credit on here. So let's do this first one. And I'll do it here in the ledgers, and then I'll do it on the journal entry on the, the second side of this. Around 9 and 10, these are connected. So uh, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, we're going to look at all these transactions. We're going to do the debits and credits for them in, journal, uh, or in the ledger first, in the ledgers. So debits and credits on their ledger. So um, for example, $5,600 cash, right? We're getting that from the owner. So our cash account will be a number in number one, right? So whatever transaction it's connected to, we'll put the number there uh, and it'll be uh, $5,600, okay? So that'll be that first number. We're also getting equipment. So we're going down here, of course, number one, right? The equipment is coming in. So that's 6,000, that's part of the investment, okay? So now the credit here, oh no, we're getting another debit here. And we're also getting web servers, $11,100. There's the web servers, those are also number one. So those are all coming in, okay? We gotta balance these out with a credit though, right? So three debits, we need one credit to balance them out, okay? So we don't need to do a credit for each one. This is These are all part of the same transaction so we can lump them together. So we got 5,600 plus 6,000 plus 11,100. All right, so 22,700. That's the sum of those. And that'll go down in our capital. That's our credit, 22,700. There it is right there. And that's from number one, right? So. Each one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right, will be its own set of journal entries. Got to have at least one debit and one credit. May have more, just like this one, right? So this is that's why I'm doing this one is because I think it's probably the most complicated of each of of all these. Um, and so, so I'm doing it with you here, so you can kind of see the uh, multiple debits for one credit on this one. So how do we do this on part two or number ten, right? So part two is going to be on to the next side. We're doing the same transactions only in journal entry format, right? So we've got to line out all of our assets that we just uh, received. Let's see, it was a web server, right? Right there. Okay, so there they all are. Five, yeah, right there. So 5,600. 6,000, 11,100, there we go. Okay, there's all of our debits. And then to balance everything out, we've got our capital account. And that was 22,700, right? So that is um, an example of a journal entry that's going to have more than one debit. Um, we could, depending on the nature of it, we could have more than one credit as well right no limit on that but at least one credit right and in this case it's just one credit that balances out with the credit 
with with that so that's what that is as soon as you get it all done of course this red X right here goes away but um, so that's that's what you're doing with that um, so hopefully this helps if you do run into problems uh, beyond this just kind of the original setup let me know um, one thing to double check right as you do these um, that I've seen students kind of normal uh, pretty typical errors is um, as you has, have all these journal entries here um, a lot of times just look down through make sure you have one debit and one credit right make sure the debits are on top uh, so if you look down through there and you see this kind of debit kind of sitting by itself without a credit you know that that's what you got to solve right you got to get the other side of the equation there um, so um, also you know just make sure you're also putting the account numbers in or uh, missing you know there's there's sometimes two tabs to problems so make sure you look at both tabs so just stuff like that really helps hopefully this will help you and have a great one uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'm more than willing to help you with problem sets if you're in my online class uh, definitely reach out to me email me we can zoom and work through some problems or we can talk over the phone or just send emails back and forth whatever you prefer and uh, have fun accounting. Bye.